Hello and welcome to another episode of So What Do You Actually Do? In today's episode, we got to interview Morgan. She works as a senior business intelligence analyst at Eaton. Prior to that, she graduated from VCU as a chemical engineer, worked in DuPont as a production engineer, transitioned into NAVSI as a project engineer, and then decided that she wants to take a boot camp on data science and pivot into that career. She did that in the beginning at Eaton and then transitioned into the business intelligence career. Please tune in to learn more. Uh, I wanted you to define, first of all, what is a business intelligence role? And then uh, after that, if you can uh, describe what is it that you actually do, and which is kind of the name of our YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> so um, a business intelligence analyst, which I am, or a BI analyst, um, of what you're doing is you are working with, in a sense, a customer and taking what they um, what their problem is and taking whether that whatever the problem is, but taking that data and visualizing it into some um, software. So I utilize Power BI. Power BI is a very powerful tool that you can use to visualize data. Um, and in a sense, when I say visualize, a lot of people may think of visualizations through like Excel, creating like different um, bar graphs, line graphs, but with Power BI, they're way more dynamic in a sense. So they, um, you can make interactive dashboards. You can um, do so many different things with Power BI and allow, you can share it with users that have Microsoft accounts. Um, also, you can do a lot of coding in the background um, of Power BI, whether that's in M code or just DAX. Um, so it allows you to clean the data as well too, because a lot of times you can use, um, use another software to do that. But the nice thing with Power BI is it has it all in one. Okay. Uh, so there is, like you mentioned, a lot of information and data. Um, is yours kind of what they call a uh, um, uh, data mining or kind of the organization of data, data to make sense of it? Or are you like, um, you're kind of organizing what's already there to represent the reality of certain trends? Or I guess maybe they're all within the same definition of each other. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'll say I'm doing a little like what a data engineer should do, in a sense. And, um, and when I say that, I mean, usually a data engineer will um, come in and take, let's say the data, our data is in SAP. So our manufacturing sites will upload it into SAP. And what the data engineer should do is take it and set up the data model. And um, from there, clean the data and have it ready. So that way, someone like a BI analyst like myself can just take that and then maybe um, do some aggregation through like SQL or doing very little cleanup and then sending it to Power BI. Um, but in the role I'm in now, I'm kind of doing that, taking that data out of the um, SAP and cleaning it up um, in a sense through SQL um, or some other softwares that we have as well too. And then from there, um, I'm also having to do the data modeling in a sense to see how it fits into the data model of the data that's already there and then uploading it into um, Power BI. So it's a two hat role in a sense, but yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, got it. That's really cool. I mean, you're you're basically, especially in the hat you're working right now through the taking of SAP information, that seems like a ginormous uh, task to uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take, go through the mad madness and make it clean and presentable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so that uh, really takes me to the um, uh, the type of day-to-day -day activities. So we kind of talked about what you actually do and the crux, a little bit of an example there and where you are in the department. If you can talk about what is a typical day for you. I will say normally I usually start between 7.30 and 8 a.m. And my most of the times my mornings now aren't filled with meetings. So a typical week, um, I'm kind of setting like um, top three things I want to get done for the day. And then I kind of start digging into some of the data, whether that's directly from SAP or Cloudera, um, where that's how we house um, our SQL and do some data manipulation there. Um, most of the time, if I'm stuck in places throughout um, in the morning time is where I kind of do a lot of my deep work, I'll say. Um, I'll kind of make a note to um, message my boss over Teams or another teammate to kind of get a point of contact of who can kind of help me in place in a place where I can kind of figure out the data. 
Um, and then um, I usually take a lunch, I'll say between 12, 30, one o'clock um, and do maybe about either 30 minutes to an hour, depending on the, um, you know, if I have to make any errands. And then from there, the second half of the day is usually where I have a couple meetings, maybe one or two meetings a day. Um, and then I will, um, you know, in between meetings, kind of do some visualization from the data that I cleaned up or looked into um, through Power BI. And then um, also kind of work on some secondary projects as well um, in the afternoon as I have time. Um, and then I usually wrap up my day usually between four and five o'clock. So um, just depends on, you know, how I'm feeling a little bit brain wise. Um, and then, uh, yeah. And then I'll say what I'm kind of working for towards project right now is I'm creating a high five metrics dashboard for our team. So in a sense, they should be able to go into this dashboard in the top five um, metrics, like KPI metrics that we typically look at for the quality team. They should be able to pull that data um, pretty quickly, depending on the region or the country that they're in. Um, and then some other projects I'm kind of working on is I'm actually creating a power app for um, a team. Um, we're tr trying to decide if power apps is actually the right platform to use, but it will be an app for um, the different plants to go in and com um, complete different audits throughout the plan to make sure that they're following quality standards and everything. Wow. So is that the first, um, these are two different projects and you're right. working on them simultaneously. Yep. Correct. Um, you might've alluded to it in a couple of things, but what are the different skills that are needed for the job? Yeah. So I think the biggest thing is knowing how to speak to people and translating um, like the technical terms into something that is not as technical. So that's one of the biggest things in my role is that, um, like I said, I'm working with people who are very quality oriented and they've been in quality for over 15 to 20 years. And they only know how to do certain things their way and that's fine. But um, in my role, you really need to know, okay, now that I I'm taking what you're telling me, how can I translate that into data? Um, also knowing how to code. I don't think um, in the role I'm in, you know, I'm not going to say I'm the, the most savviest coder, but you need to at least know, understand the basics. So you're coding in SQL. I'm coding in DAX um, through Power BI. Um, you also need to know how to visualize data, whether that's in Power BI or a Tableau. Also, just being a little more um, open to learning, because like I mentioned to you, I'm working on a project through Power Apps. I don't have a clue about Power Apps, but just being open to learning like a new software and just learning like something new that may be out of your uh, comfort zone, I think is a big skill because a lot of people on my team look to me as this is the issue I have, what software is out there, what can we figure out how to um, fix this and make it more um, automated. And it's kind of on me to look up the different tools that are out there or, or network with people throughout um, in similar roles as I am to figure out what are people doing to kind of create a new um, tool. That's great. You know, I was going to ask you for a list of apps or programs, but you kind of answered that if there, there are a lot of them and you have to navigate for the right one. Oh, yeah. But what is a typical pay range uh, for this job? Yeah, so I would say for this role, um, it's between 110 to 115. Thank you. Um, and last but not least, for everyone who is um, thinking of pivoting in, later in their career, uh, thinking of majoring in a in a in a, um, a, a undergraduate degree that kind of contributes towards business intelligence, or in high school, and they're like, you know what, the future calls for coding. Um, what what are your advice or advices for those people that are trying to pursue the career you're in? Yeah, um, I'll say that's a difficult one because I know so many people who are in like similar roles or like data roles, and they are kind of like me where they started in a whole nother major and they ended up. So I think the biggest thing is just um, for a high schooler, especially is just maybe being interested in like a math and um, really a math role. I think someone that focuses on math um, in a sense, like statistics and um, you know, basic calculus, I don't think we need to go into the more complicated calculus we took as engineers. Um, and then also just being um, open to coding really set someone up well in a role like mine um and then for undergrad to study um honestly now i think i see a lot of colleges have um like a data anal data analytics major or like a business analytics 
major. So I wish that was something that I actually probably would have studied as well too, because um, I would say when I look at people that maybe study engineering versus people that study that, they just probably have more of a statistics background than I do. And this just takes a little more for me to like pick that up, but there's really no difference than um, maybe I took a lot more science, extra science classes than needed. And for those that are kind of trying to pivot into this career, I guess they can listen to the episode from the beginning to 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 know why you pivoted. <laughs> yeah, I would say that. And then um, I don't know. I was a, I'm a big proponent of look for the free resources out there. So I um, found, like I mentioned, like the Correlation One team to um, take that free boot camp. Um, I know there's so many boot camps you can pay for, or their master programs and all these different things, but. I personally would rather look at what's free and what's out there first before um, spending money on it. So that's just me. Um, so I would say that would be something if you're looking to pivot before you say, let me just go to school and do that. Look at what free resources you can find. That makes sense. Uh, and we come to the end of this episode. Morgan, thank you so much for giving us the um, luxury of time. Uh, so thank you for giving us your time for this interview and for everyone who's listening. Uh, please don't hesitate to um, ask questions in the comments. We will try to reach out to Morgan for answers. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, especially to those friends of yours that are thinking of uh, data science or business intelligence. Uh, I think Morgan gave us a lot of great content to uh, to, to munch with and, and kind of start thinking, is this the career I want? How does it work? Yeah. Morgan, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> thank you. Have a good one.